Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill. I'm delighted again to be able to speak to Tony Gott, Exec Chairman and uh, CEO Vic Kist of Sayeta, a leading uh, e-drive and um, electric powertrain uh, developer. So welcome, gents. Hi, it's good to be here again. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, well, um, good to be back. Yeah, well, big congrats on uh, Tuesday's interims and uh, flagship contract out in India. Maybe we can start there, Vic. Could you just walk us through the sort of the significance and scale and time, um, timeline for um, the uh, that, that particular agreement? Yeah, uh, absolute pleasure. In fact, I'm going to show you what we sold. Um, so there it is. It's a dummy. Otherwise, I couldn't lift it that easily. Um, but it's basically the famous actual flux motor, which is now fully industrialized, the integrated inverter uh, to reduce components even further and our own transmission. And uh, very proud to say that uh, how we could spend months and months and months selling 500 e-drives here and 500 but we knew after closing the combat deal focus on the right client and it's this is a client we've been working on for almost two or three years now to get close to them uh, and it was always predicted to take long but to sell 80,000 of these in one go and that's a minimum and that's only a fraction of the entire market that is switching to electric drive. Um, and what, what does that go into? Is it is it a is it a, um, a, a three wheeler or a scooter or a four wheeler? Well, that's that's uh, that's how we designed it. The motor and the inverter is always the same, so you could fit that directly into a motorbike. We have all of those videos on on YouTube if you fancy seeing it. This one has the the, the transmission fitted to it, and therefore you can fit it behind. Uh, between the rear wheels and that's three wheelers four wheelers last mile delivery uh, vehicles uh, where we're also picking up traction with some some substantial clients in Europe so we're now live and moving forward in India but also in Europe also in the UK and also in America and just broadly, I don't want to sort of like press you on sort of like you know, commercial confidentiality on it at all. But just broadly, what type of sort of like price would that sort of sell? Are we talking sort of like, I don't know, hundreds? Or are we talking a thousand dollars? Or I mean, what, what sort of just give investors a bit of a bit of feeling of sort of like, you know, what, what would be the potential mm -hmm. price for that sort of stuff? A range, well, maybe. It, if um, you, sensitive. Oh. okay 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 let's move on then in that case then it, it, the, the thing is if you're a vehicle manufacturer and you're interested send us an rfq with realistic volumes okay we'll tell you the price <laughs> okay oh, well said okay um just to, just uh, tony you just walk us through the sort of the supply how we'll actually be able to deliver sort of eighty thousand and and potentially a lot more of those type of units what sort of where will be the production and getting the parts and scaling up to be able to deliver that type of volume yeah uh, um, and this is an important part of the decision by the oem because um they, they have to trust us uh they're they're putting their faith uh for a, a substantial number of new product introductions in, in our tech and in our ability to collaborate but also in our ability to get the supply chain going and manufacturing going and um, when Vic was out in India just a couple of weeks ago um, he managed to uh, finalize and secure contracts uh, which are underpinning this manufacture in India and so the elements of it major elements like the transmission and the manufacturing of the pcbs for the power electronics um are now uh, uh subcontracted to second tier suppliers to our joint venture company sayata vna in india um importantly all three parts of this the motor the transmission and the power electronics all have our ip there are designs or source codes and, and therefore, in, it, we retain full control of all of those. The um, that supply chain can be used for other products to other OEMs in the same market or internationally as well. And so, we're, we're uh, midway through forming quite a strong, powerful grouping of people that uh, are capable of working with us to produce the whole eDrive system. Um, so that we can work across the whole market. Mm. 
So if you, so if you actually set up that sort of like a, I don't know, we call it an expertise hub, a centre of excellence in, in India, where you can sort of produce at this at scale, both locally. What, what, what sort of like um, sort of size are we talking about? Because I did read a headline that by sort of the end of the decade of 2030, this is over a $200 billion market. And, and I think, was it somewhere that India are, are actually insisting that all the auto sector goes to electric? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's huge. The The addressable market for us is ridiculous. I mean, it, it's just a very, very, very large number. Um, and it's exploding. And right at the start of the business, Vic and the team had this vision to help clean up the air in major cities around the world. And in the work that happened then and since, that's validated those those visions. Um, it's clear that the transition is happening at, at one heck of a pace in India, and uh, I think there was an, even an article in today's Telegraph in the business section of the Telegraph, explaining the, the size and explosion of electrification in India. And we use the quote: "20 was a 23 million vehicles are produced each year in India. 20 million of them." are two wheels or lightweight vehicles and um, this is expected to grow <laughs> and we're right at the start with better tech than anyone else trusted by one of the world's biggest multinational oems with some of their new products so we feel pretty proud of uh, getting to this point uh, in our journey Mm. No, yeah, I mean, de de definitely. Just think in terms of getting those sort of like the, the first sort of like um, formal pieces of kit on the road. But when would that be in India? I mean, is it, is, is it going to be immediate or is it going to be, is it going to back end of next year or mid-year? Or what sort of like timeline for getting these, <coughs> these motors and the inverters out into sort of like, you know, real hard sort of um, uh, automotives? Yeah, it's <clears throat> I had both Tony and myself coming from the VW and, and BMW background. Uh, in, in the normal German industry, um, IPO in 21, uh, secure the first client within the year, and then it would take another four to five years before you see the commercial effect. In light duty, that goes a lot faster. Uh, and that's another reason that we chose that market segment, because we can't afford just physically R&Ding, and we've already done that for a number of years. Um, what's interesting is that the first uh, powertrains are already in India. They are already fitted to vehicles. Uh, that was the proof of concept we did uh, late summer, early uh, autumn. And um, it, what, what we know and have known for years is that as soon as you feel that AFT motor in a vehicle, you're sold. And then if you combine that to the cost versus the efficiency and the fact that you can make the battery smaller, that's it. They all want it. Now, we have picked one client to start with, and we will service them and make them happy and, 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 and deepen that trust. So over the next six months, we will be shipping quite some powertrains from Sunderland and Silverstone directly into India to support their certification testing, their durability testing, uh, and also their demo fleet, so, because those vehicles need to be rolled out. They do the battery themselves. We help them with the integration of that battery. And for that reason, we also are allowed to charge a fairly substantial number upfront for those engineering services, as you could see in the press release. From the second half year, we'll be off to off process in India. And uh, don't forget, we now have the best production engineers, not only in Silverstone, but also in Sunderland. And they've already been made, making 25 million motors. But uh, Sayata VNA is now also getting close to being 15 people in total. And the best production engineers have been released from Padmini to join Sayata VNA. And they have just spent uh, two weeks in Silverstone and Sunderland to learn how to make the AFT motor. And they are coming with such fantastic suggestions. If you see that chemistry mm -hmm. between those production engineers that speak, and they look different, they speak different languages, um, but they have the same DNA. Uh, and, and, but many has that trust relationship with these manufacturers for highly complicated emission components. They have a proven track record to make it, and they will get us into production faster.
And are there any other potential OEMs that uh, the uh, the joint venture would be able to service, or is it effectively just might keep your head down and, and try and sort this 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 contract out first? Do you imagine? Can you imagine us putting our head down? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's it's we are we're drowning in inquiries. Uh, we said that over the summer as well. Um, so the the cherry picking has started. Um, we only want to work with the best OEMs in the world, uh, and we want to get them into production faster. But we can't say yes to everyone. Uh, so there's a number of inquiries that we're already processing. But don't forget, this launching customer is a multinational uh, across the globe, uh, and they have further vehicle requirements uh, that they are asking us to look at. We'll have to put a mo an order in for myself, uh, get an electric scooter um, out in the UK to hopefully be imported from India. Now, um, you, you talked about sort of the best in class OEMs, um, uh, Vic. Now, you've, you've obviously you've got, you've got Commet out in the States who are essentially the number one by a mile in truck and trailer e-hubs out in America. Could you take us to the progress on that one? Because these guys, I mean, looking at the headlines, I mean, in, in the papers, I mean, they're, they're huge and they've got a massive heritage, particularly with, I think, was it with Volvo and with Ford trucks? Yeah, no, it's, it's um, as you know, we, we, we signed Conmet in uh, July, I think, and then we did the fundraise to finance our portion of that joint development agreement. Um, you also know that the Sayeta is three pillars, light duty, heavy duty and marine, and then production plants around the world. Um, <clears throat> that heavy duty division has its own management team. Um, <clears throat> they are now running that program. They're very, very qualified uh, engineers, also commercial engineers. The collaboration is going extremely well. So they've been out to Portland many times. They came to see us when we were at uh, the Hanover show, IAA. Uh, and uh, indeed, on the two product groups that we are developing, uh, we're on track, especially that first one, the in-wheel charger uh, for refrigerator trailers. Uh, as Tony already uh, said in, in the other interviews this week, we expect to see financial results from that combat powered by Sayeta solution uh, in the next financial year. Um, so that's, that's extremely quick for truck applications. Um, and they, they, because they trust us so much, we are talking about potentially another product variant um, that they would like to have into production as quickly as possible. So, right. um, yeah, and good did, relationship. Uh, and Tony, in terms of that production of the, say, the inverters for, for that e-hub, et cetera, where is that going to be? Is that Sunderland, is it, or is it going to be? Or is he going to you put a production facility of ultimately in the state? No, oh, yeah, it, for those products that are uh, manufactured completely in, in the States, um, uh, then the, the production will be local. Uh, it's our philosophy not to start trying to ship things around the world, mm. um, but uh, to make the logistics of it work um, as efficiently as possible by having them as close to the client as possible. So some of the discussions on the lightweight side, for instance, are influencing the site of our future manufacturing facilities uh, because the client is saying, can you please set up a factory locally? So, um, yeah, well, especially PCBs. We don't want to start making PCBs ourselves. That's mm. a, such a low margin um, exercise. Uh, that's not our specialism. So we, we subcontract these. Um, and it's important as well in that um, to, to realize that, that the volumes that we're seeking in these markets enable us to get good uh, good savings. Mm. Uh, it, it's really economy of scale works on relatively commodity items like castings or gear trains or PCBs. Uh, and so we use existing companies well-versed in in um, mass volume manufacture uh, uh, and that helps us scale up quickly and that's important in the OEM's mind of course because uh, the moment those uh, products start rolling down the line they need to be raining parts reliably in mm. and uh, if we were all trying to make them ourselves from our own little factory a long way away <laughs> that would be impossible for them to contemplate so um, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so where are the where are the, the pilot parts then? Where are they going to be manufactured in Sunderland, and then effectively those systems put into the effectively the tri the road trials? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, that's the idea. Sunderland okay, there's a specialist um, factory of highly skilled uh, uh, electric motor production engineers. Um, Fine, and it's it's always our philosophy to 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 get the uh, research and development mm. at the core of the tech done in the UK and the first stage development of the production process, which often brings more IP into the business as well, very valuable. Uh, and that will happen in the UK in the production in Sunderland. Fine. Okay, good. What, what, what's the status, Vic, on, on the terms of the marine? Because um, obviously you've now got an outboard motor. It's a matter of sort of like selling it, I guess. And uh, I mean, the EU is, is definitely moving towards banning, isn't it? Anything other than an electric outboard motor. So the market does seem to be moving directionally to your expertise. No, it's it's <clears throat> we 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 monitored Torquedo for years, and and they're already at thirty five thousand systems a year, a hundred million turnover, uh, and uh, they were snapped up by by Deutz uh, already in two thousand eighteen, I believe. Um, what we've seen now with the demo fleet in in Amsterdam, uh, not only can we make a better product. Uh, it's always based on the AFT, uh, so, but we fit the motor at the top. Um, it, the, the patent applications are going really well uh, because we have this really clever closed loop uh, cooling system so that you can leave the motor in the water if it freezes, uh, whereas most of the conventional outboards, they, they physically crack uh, when the water freezes up. Uh, and that's why we're getting a lot of interest from Scandinavia. What is interesting, because Tony and I are much more automotive guys, not really marine guys, um, we just came back from the, the METS show in Amsterdam. Uh, again, Propel has its own management team. Uh, Sander is doing a fantastic job. Um, but what is interesting is that we were the new kids on the block a year ago. And uh, it, it was almost like they looked at us and like, mm, let's give them a year and see if they're still around. Now, the fact that we closed Comat, we raised more money. Uh, the confidence has gone up. That mothership uh, mm. does what it says and says yeah. what it does. Um, but um, we are now ramping up volume uh, in Sunderland for the AFT motor production. Yeah. Um, we were slightly behind. Propel is only about 15 people at the moment. Everybody thinks that there's hundreds of people there. There isn't. Um, so what we've agreed with that uh, strategic uh, transmission uh, sub manufacturer in India, yes, we have a transmission for the AFT motor, but if you look at the leg of the propel unit, that effectively is a transmission as well. So we turned around to our partner in India and said, we can't ramp up quick enough. We're running out of staff, we're at capacity. Could you help? And they were like, I mean, the spark in their eyes to mm. make the entire leg for us. So we're negotiating that at the moment, and we feel that that will allow us to increase volume quite dramatically in the next financial year. And is this the, this is the joint venture, is it in India, or is this another partner? No, it's a joint venture is Padmini. Uh, yes. And then uh, on top of that joint venture, uh, Padmini and we have preferred suppliers for subsystems, like right. PCB manufacturing, for transmissions, and they are just a tier two into our either Sayata VNA or directly into Propel, um, directly from India. Um, uh, but, but, I must say the, the market demand is extremely strong, uh, but at the same time, there are supply chain shortages. Uh, and of course, the market is in flux. We thought we had a battery partner. Suddenly they were sold to a, a Japanese company and then their management team changes. And then so you all in automotive, you always need to have a plan behind a plan behind a plan. Uh, and that's what we understand very well. Good. Okay. And then Tony, just on the sort of top level numbers, I saw obviously first half we had sort of revenues. I think it was just over a million. I think it was. Is that right? And then we had, and then, and then we, I think um, Canaccord have got sort of like uh, just over um, eight million or something for, for, for the full year. So can you just talk us through exactly what what sales we're going to you, you anticipate to sort of like see for the second half or from you know from the end of September? Is it is it going to be a mix of all three development? 
sort of like contracts and um and, and piloting and a few marines how does it actually break down or just as a just a feel for investors no it, it, it's a mix there there's money coming in from government um one, one of the things which happened to us quite late was was a a, a, a very very technical tweak by the auditors that that uh, that um uh, determined uh, through a particular I, I, IFRS that the, the money flowing in from Commet would be recognised as an intangible asset, mm. not as uh, on the P and L. Um, so that's that's one major difference between um, uh, a, a, pri a prior profit forecast and what it is now. It's the same cash. It's just yeah. somewhere else, which yeah. is a bit frustrating to us. But nonetheless, that's that's the fact. So moving forward, uh, yeah, engineering development fees, uh, especially flowing from uh, the Indian uh, clients now, mm. um, uh, the sale of propeller units and sale of other AFT units into um, other uh, lightweight vehicles in Europe, mm. and the US. Um, so it's, it's a mixture of all of those things uh, is uh, the phase we're now in. Yeah. And then I guess the year afterwards, I mean, I think we've got um, can Accords on 32 million. I'm guessing that's going to be more sort of second half weighted, isn't it? As you as you as basically that really starts to scale up for the uh, the lightweight and obviously the combat uh, contracts. Um, yeah, um, what, what you're seeing now is a business that's that's tipping from an, a speculative R&D mm. tech company into a fully fledged global um, trading supplier of, um, of uh, e-drive systems. Um, and that ramp up as it happens um, will be the determining factor in how quickly that, that revenue moves. Um, mm. All that we can say is that all of our plans are, are, are designed so that that ramp up is um, extremely fast yeah. remarkably fast in the sector because we're using very large uh, companies that are used to mass volume in region with deep understanding of their supply chain and they're against a, a very firm um, expectation and order in this one place and an expectation of orders uh, from Conmet, which yeah. are very large so um, it, it will just follow now the ramp up of, okay, fine. Uh, of everything. Um, and another thing to bear in mind for investors is uh, the way in which this is structured. Because we've second tiered major elements of the, say, the components in India, uh, there is no capex involved in that. That's that's managed by the, the supplier. And uh, the capex revol uh, required to support the AFT motor um, is is very limited because we have prototype production lines in the UK anyway. Some of that will transfer to India, and um, that there is an uh, an Indian culture around the assembly of those units, which they know very very well. So there's nothing in the volumes that that we can see uh, phases us technically, practically, um, or commercially. So. Um, that that ramp up should be uh, as fast as anywhere has ever achieved before okay well i mean i did notice at the end of september you've got a rock solid balance sheet you've got over 22 million pounds of uh, of net cash can i go to a sort of like pointing towards about 11 million by the end of this fiscal year where is where is that money going to be deployed is it sort of like is it going to be working capital or just or just uh you know other other investments where what how's that going to be utilized well we're not about to make any more acquisitions we can okay albeit <laughs> <laughs> albeit vic has done a very good job so far oh no i know honestly <laughs> we we're so proud of what, what, what the company's achieved um uh, and those acquisitions have really accelerated us and uh, put mm. us in the place we are now. So it's it's great, mm. but no more acquisitions. We're not about to uh, quadruple uh, the workforce either. That's not not our ambition. Where the money's going to go, uh, we know downstream. But um, when we need to support the combat industrialization phase, which is towards the end of next mm. year, 
then yes, those monies will be deployed there. Um, right, okay. <laughs> okay, good. So they're allocated. Now, now, Vic, just finally, the news flow is it is it is it contract, contract, contracts, or is it how, how what should investors think for about the next three or so, sort of six months on news flow? <clears throat> well, first, first of all, uh, this is only the start. Um, yeah. So we are now a uh, established e-drive solution <laughs> company. Um, we even thought about uh, becoming the best vertically integrated e-drive solutions company. Uh, we can talk about that in in the future. Mm. Um, what we see is that because of the the partnership with Padmini and with Commet. People are really taking us uh, serious and trusting us with long term contracts. Um, we will be working over Christmas to uh, process more inquiries that we've had also from the uh, current uh, client. Um, but what is particularly interesting, and, and this is something that Tony and I already knew in November last year, we took on that beautiful uh, assembly plant in Sunderland. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are very precious over the AFT motor, but that is pretty much 10 to 20 kilowatt, and that's the range where the AFT motor sits. Um, and uh, because of our press release in April, uh, these vehicle manufacturers, uh, including Commet with their in-wheel generator, said, well, you've got lots of production equipment make, that can make, I don't know, 40 to 80,000 uh, small electric motors per month. Um, can we utilize that production capacity? Because there is a huge constraint on production capacity in e-drives. And uh, a little new flash for you, there it is. Um, we doubled the size, tripled the power, so we can now offer a four kilowatt uh, motor, still running our same inverter tech and source code, and we're already already selling it. Um, wow. We've had it under test for a number of months, and it's the same as the in-wheel generator motor for Commet, but scaled and adjusted. So, and on that basis, again, the conversations in India were simply fantastic because that almost catapults us even deeper into the scooter market with swappable batteries. Uh, it's worth having a look at that swappable battery yeah. new flow. Honda came out with a big statement uh, earlier today, and all of these vehicles need electric drive solutions. So there will be a lot of news from us, but we only tell you once the contracts are signed. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that. And uh, thanks very much again for your t time, um, guys. And uh, we'll speak to you hopefully in the new year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.